football fans to another installment of YSN Live Softball. Akron Firestone is the site for this Division I state championship game between the Austin Town Fitch Falcons and the Anthony Wayne General. Speaking of Anthony, Ty Bartell alongside Anthony Hartwig for the call of this game. And Anthony, we talked about all season long, some teams play a whole season to get here, some teams play their whole lives, they never get here. Special moment for both these teams to be here on this stage right here today. Such a young roster for Fitch that had this goal from the start that they wanted to be a program that really put their mark on Fitch softball and Fitch athletics. Ty, you were telling me earlier, if softball wins today, they'd be the first team state championship since what, 1931? For the three major sports. So when we're talking three major sports for girls sports in Fitch, that's volleyball, that's softball, that's basketball. None of those teams have ever won a state championship in their history. Last girls team state championship came back in 2003 with the bowling team. So when we're talking major sports, and on the boys' side, boys basketball, the only state championship out of baseball, football, and basketball back in 1931. So really, it'd be the first major sports, quote unquote, there's no disrespect to bowling. No doubt, no doubt. Major sports championship since 1931 on a team side. And a lot of track stars that have come through, of course, but team sport since 1931. And when we're talking about pitchers, we're going to be looking in the circle at the pitching matchup today. Brooklyn Patchen is going to be pitching a senior for Anthony Wayne. On the other side, sophomore Sidney Watts. We know a little bit about Sidney Watts and untouchable once again in the state semifinal. Here's bad news for Anthony Wayne. He hit her personal record yesterday. Clocked at 70 miles per hour with her rise ball. For softball fans that don't know what the number scale is, you can watch the World Series this weekend with the best softball pitchers in the nation. You might see five or six of them that can hit seven. It is elite of the elite if you are in the 70s as a pitcher in softball. And to her credit, only a sophomore as well, so still a couple years of development here at the high school level before she thinks about the college level. We personally talked beforehand with her future being as bright as it is, it could be a situation when we're talking about her upperclassmen years where she very well can go anywhere that she wants. She is going to be chasing Taryn Alvello for statistically the best pitcher that's ever come to the state of Ohio. Taryn Alvello played for Bloom Carroll, eventually went on to play at the University of Washington, went to the championship series with them. And that's the pitcher that's going to be compared to her old career. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the visiting team on the scoreboard, the Austin Town Fitch Falcons. Ayla Ray will be leading things off and batting first at short. Over at second, batting second will be the senior, Caitlin Mitchell. Batting third and pitching today, sophomore Sydney Watts. Catching and batting in the cleanup spot, senior McKenna Hogan. Batting fifth, the freshman, the geologist right-handed bat, Kylie Folkwine. As you like to call her, the Austin Town Bridge, Anthony, the designated player, batting six, sophomore Sammy Severn. Batting seventh, hoping it's Abby Day every day. Abby Toth will be the freshman first baseman, batting seventh. Morgan Roby, another freshman, third baseman, right-hander, batting eighth. Rounding things out today, in the ninth spot, the senior right fielder, Maddie Butis. On the other side, for the Anthony Wayne Generals, as follows. Abby Canelli will be leading things off and playing short the junior. Batting second from the left-handed side, E. Double Air Buchman. Batting from the left side, right, right fielder. Oh, batting from the right-handed side, third baseman, freshman, Megan Sumner. Trinity Nowicki will be the cleanup bat catching and batting right-handed. Right-handed bat and the pitcher, Brooklyn Patchen, will be batting fifth, the senior. Junior, first baseman, Ali Myers, bats from the right side and bat sixth. Designated player, Kat Myers, the senior, bats from the right-handed side, bats seventh. Batting eighth, the second base senior, Taya Marshall, bats from the right-handed side, and batting ninth, rounding things out, Molly Connor, the sophomore right-hander. We look at these two lineups, Ant. Austin Town Fitch, the away team. Anthony Wayne, the home team, so they will have the bottom of the inning to look forward to later innings, Ant. But for Fitch, you got to feel this means that they need to get some runs early. And that's been one of the keys when talking with Coach Ward. He feels like three runs is the magic number for this team. But he also says that come with those three runs, if we could score first, get some of the pressure off a of sit in the circle, it only does us better. Yeah, they won 3 nothing yesterday. It wasn't an offensive power show by any means. But they did their job. They came in, they set the tone, they scored the first two runs of the game, I believe, in the first inning. 
And then they just kind of went the rest of the game. And, of course, Sydney Watts threw a no-hitter, which is just unreal. As we have the national anthem coming up, we're going to take a real quick break and be back with the live action after this. What can you do on over 5,000 acres? At Mill Creek Metro Parks, you can discover unique habitats and wildlife, create memorable family moments, experience history, heritage, and park programs, explore scenic landscapes, Take time to relax and be well. Connect with nature and each other. Come see what's new at Mill Creek Metro Parks. Plan your trip now at millcreekmetroparks.org. Change. This one word can make you break out in a cold sweat. But with change comes wisdom, experience, and understanding. At Myers Family Insurance, we can help make changes in Medicare, insurance, and retirement a positive experience for you and your family. We've gone through changes, like our new office and new faces to help our family of clients too. For all your Medicare needs, call Myers Family Insurance. Check us out online at MyersFamilyInsurance.com or find us on Facebook. Welcome back, everybody. Ty Bartow, Anthony Hartwick, YSNLive.com, back with the complete audio broadcast of this Division I state championship game. Austintown Fitch getting ready to take the batting lineup as the pitcher, Brooklyn Patchen, gets ready to take the circle. As we see the Falcons have some red and blue hairstyles going on. McKenna Hogan, Sydney Watts, it looks like Morgan Roby, Abby Toth, all donning the red and blue hair colors representing the Fitch Falcons. Alma mater colors. As we look at the Unis today for both teams. The Falcons are going to be donning the navy top pinstripe bottoms high navy socks, white lettering and lettering. For Anthony Wayne, they're going to be in the all white home unis with the more traditional blue trim all the way throughout the uniform numbering and lettering. So when we're looking at these two teams and we look at the Austin Town Fitch journey to this point, Prior to, it was about getting over Hoover. Two years ago, Lydia Spalding, a senior, gets injured in that district championship game against the Hoover Vikings. Fitch falls in that one. Last year, Sydney Watts, a freshman, they get to a regional final game with North Canton Hoover. Hoover gets the better of them, five to three. This year, Walsh Jesuit takes care of Hoover. Yeah. Fitch is able to take care of Walsh Jesuit to get back to the state title scene for the first time in 30 years. And then, of course, from that point on, they were able to get the three nothing shutout to get here. But when we look at Anthony Wayne, they beat a former state champion in their own right in Watkins Memorial, who is also a state-ranked team. Yeah, everyone kind of expected Anthony Wayne to try to lose that game. I mean, you're, you're talking about a Watkins team that had been to state the last three years in a row, 2021, 2022, 2023. A powerhouse in softball. And Anthony Wayne came in, pitched a really good game, won 2-1. to one. Got the quote unquote upset victory here in the state semifinals. They're riding in hot. A lot of people wrote them off in that state semifinal. A team like that can feel really dangerous as they believe in themselves and they're confident going into this championship. Looking at the umpiring crew today, Jerry Norris, the home plate umpire, Rick Merv is at first, Darren Alexander over at second, and Darren Descender will be over at third. So a four-man umpiring crew today at the state level. They want to make sure all the calls are right on the field today. Anthony Wayne has one state championship back in 2003. This is the first time they've been to state since 2021. They were state finalists in 21 and 01 ahead of that 03 win for the generals including flex players and batting lineup both of these teams have four seniors that are starting today maddie butis ashley mclean mckenna hogan caitlin mitchell the four for austin town fitch for anthony wayne brooklyn patchen the pitcher cat myers taya marshall and cc stam the left fielder playing flex you know something that you guys at home can't see but i really like coach ward going from the first base dugout to his third base coaching box. But before he gets there, he stops, gives a handshake to the opposing catcher and wishes her luck in the game. This is the kind of stuff that Coach Ward and this Fitch team do. They are ultimate competitors, but they have an ultimate respect of all the teams that they play. They were probably Canfield's biggest fan in the game before. 
I know Canfield dropped that game, but they're one of the teams that just really has great sportsmanship. You talk person over player, that's a mindset that goes throughout the Austin Town Fitch softball organization. And Coach Ward talked about the standards that you have to set to walk that fine line of getting the best out of the player part while also keeping intact the person part of each softball player. Yeah, and Coach Ward, it's easy to say that, but when I talked to Austin Town Fitch players this year, I asked him, what are the things that he does to prove that he cares about you more than a person than a player? And they just said, like, the way that he shows confidence in them as a person and their standards. Like, he does not get on them for mistakes. He doesn't um, he doesn't expect more from them than maybe they expect from themselves. And he does those little things that really show the players that he means what he says when he says that. He backs it up. Brooklyn Patchen is the right-handed pitcher in the circle today for Anthony Wayne. Defensively a rounder. Allie Myers is at first. Taya Marshall at second over at third. Megan Sumner. Shortstop Abby Canelli. Then in the outfield, Double Dare Butchman is in right. Over in center, Molly Connor. And then the flex player in left, CeCe Stam. And, we're and behind the plate, too. I don't want to go, don't want to forget Trinity Nowicki, too, behind the dish catching Patchen today. What is the Play Devils advocate, Anthony? What is the Generals? game plan for pitching wise Brooklyn Patchen against this Fitch lineup. Well Patchen yesterday in that game against Watkins Memorial really had her rise ball going, got Watkins Memorial to chase a lot of pitches up in the strike zone. That's going to be her go-to game again today. Kind of like Sydney Watts, not the velocity that we'll see as Sydney, but she does have above average velocity and she's going to be working up in the zone quite a bit. Ayla Ray leads things off for the Falcons. First pitch, a swing and a miss. Empty swing for Ray. 0-1 oh, to start for the Generals. And there you go. First pitch, rise ball, got under Ayla Ray's hands and that's how uh, Padgett is going to set the tone. Attacking early. Getting the swing that time, laying off. Ayla Ray evens the count, a ball and a strike. Ace of base, Ayla Ray batting 545 on the season with five home runs and that power swing she really developed in the offseason and makes her a viable threat at the top of the order. She's always bragging last year that she got a home run off of Sydney Watts <laughs> in practice. Couple swings and misses for Ayla Ray, a rarity to see that on the season, but now we get the two-strike approach from Ayla Ray, which is pretty tough to crack. Only a handful of strikeouts on the season. Well, you'll see it a, a few times, two strikes, <laughs> but very rarely a strikeout, and there's one. That's got to do so much confidence for a Brooklyn Patchen in the circle. A very tough out traditionally. Four pitches up, down, see you later. A strikeout of Ayla Ray will start this game here in the first. Three swinging strikes, which you even rarer from Ayla Ray. She, if she strikes out, it's usually looking. Caitlin Mitchell gets brushed off the plate on the inside, 1-0. Righty-righty matchup. Caitlin Mitchell broke out the gold glove yesterday, made some fine defensive plays over at second against the Lebanon Warriors. She goes way under the radar on this team, how important she is, not just at the plate, but also on defense. Squares around oh. a bunt. It gets past everybody, and Caitlin Mitchell ends up at first. You were saying, Ant. <laughs> That's a hard bunt. Everyone was playing in, and it popped off of Caitlin Mitchell's bat and got right past the third baseman who was charging in to get a soft bunt. I don't know if Mitchell planned that or if it was just one of those ones where the velocity of Padgett made it jump off the bat, but either way it works. Caitlin Mitchell quite possibly may be the hottest bat in this postseason for Austin Town Fitch as she gets another ball game with a hit. Bunt's infield single that time. Sydney Watts goes hacking at a first pitch from Patchett, falls behind 0-1 on the swing and a miss. Caitlin Mitchell at first, one down in the inning. Sydney Watts at the plate. Watts another 500 plus season, six homers on the year as well. Inside, that one gets away though. Back to the screening, Caitlin Mitchell, big turn at second, but she does advance and she'll park herself in scoring position, still only one out in the inning. One of the thing catchers have to be very aware of here at Firestone Stadium, it's a really big backstop. And if the ball gets by you, it's gonna roll for a while. Sydney Watts. And look for some outfield grass. Base hit should score. Mitchell throws the bunt down right back to the pitcher. Patchen. Patchen has trouble dealing with it. Runners are at the corners. Watts safe at first. Another infield single. That's one of those bunts that you have to try to catch. Once you don't, it's going to be really hard to field. And Patchen couldn't catch it. Tried to get it on the little 
short hop and couldn't handle it. Coach Ward talks about those two ties with the Canfield Cardinals and he says he's so happy that they got those two games in because it exposed their ability, the lack of ability to play small yes. ball. And Fitch was able to work on that after that first game with Canfield and you're seeing it pay off now in the tournament. Okay. They're getting a lot better at playing small ball. You even ball. saw it the second game against Canfield. There were plenty of opportunities for Fitch to try to bunt and they just could not get one down. It was one of the differences in that second Canfield game. Runners at the corners. One down, McKenna Hogan. But of course, who was it that eventually got one down? None other than Sidney Watts, who just got one down again. Proving that yes, he's powerful. Yes, he can hit the home run. But hey, if you want me to lay down a butt, yeah, I can do that too. Looks like pinch running for Watts is the cleaner, Tina Montgomery. And they're gonna intentionally walk McKenna Hogan. How about the respect shown to Hogan? They say, I want to face the freshman folk wine instead. That's partly respect, and it's also partly trying to make everything a force out, not, not trying to make anything harder than it has to be on your infield. Rachel Spaulding also going to be a courtesy runner, so the bags are now loaded for Austin Town Fitch. One down here in the top of the first. Kylie Folkwine coming to bat. Caitlin Mitchell at third. Tina Montgomery's at second over at first. Rachel Spaulding, both Montgomery and Spaulding, courtesy running for Watts and Hogan. We've already seen Anthony Wayne struggle in the infield with small ball. I wouldn't be surprised if Kylie Folkwine lays one down here with the bases loaded. Corners are pinching. Shortstop also taking a couple steps in as well. You have a lot of room if you can get it in between third and in between first and the pitcher, there's second base playing deep. Kylie Folkwine on a nine, the 9U nine Valley Extreme team as she fouls a first pitch bunt attempt back to the netting, 0-1. 9U Valley Extreme team, Kylie Folkwine was a part of the team that won the national championship down in Virginia for the softball team, Valley Extreme. So not that she's been at the state level moment, but she's been in big moments before. And she's right at home in some situation like this. And she has moved to a national travel team this year out of, North, out of New Jersey. Throw goes in the oh. throw. Left field and the throw back into home. And they're going to tag it. Caitlin Mitchell it. and get her out. Unbelievable right. throw out in left field by CC Stamp. That is a really good recovery. An error eventually, but Caitlin Mitchell took a little bit of time getting back up after diving back to third. Couldn't get back up and run home in time, and that's a big out for Anthony Wayne. Kylie Folkwine jabbed at it, so it was 0-2. The catcher, Nowicki, came up, tossed the ball to third, but it went into left. Caitlin Mitchell went diving back into the bag, really didn't have her momentum moving towards the plate. If she did, she might have been sitting uh, with a 1-0 lead for the Falcons. Hold up by Kylie Folkwine, it's 1-2. The throw made her dive back, and that was the one thing that hurt Fitch. I would have made, made me like, after that, you, you force a good throw. It, it beat her by quite a bit. You also have to watch out for obstruction on a play like that because the throw's coming in from left field and the catcher's got to line up towards left to receive it. So that's one of the other things that umpires, especially with a four-man crew, are gonna be watching today. We've seen illegal pitches yesterday called at a much higher clip than we're used to. Obstruction can also be called a little bit more often than we're used to with the two-man crew during the regular season softball. Folkwine fouled off the last pitch. Count has remained one and two. Runners are at second and third for the Falcons. Two down here in the top of the first. And again, Folkwine fouls it back to stay alive. One and two. It's a big moment in this game. Fitch with a huge opportunity. Wayne trying to get out of the, the jam. It could be a turning point even as early as it is. How much do you think it affects the confidence of the team losing an out at the plate? It, it definitely stings, but you're still in the same opportunity where a base hit can score a couple of runs. Runs inside, Folkwine gets brushed off the plate to even the count. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out here in the top of the first. I like that pitch, trying to jam Folkwine. Obviously, she's gonna be trying to pull something. So you go even more inside, back her off the plate. Now, let's see if they go back outside to Folkwine on this pitch. The 2-2, two -two. laying off Ooh. does Folkwine to run the count full. Good pitch by Patch and went outside near the knees, but Folkwine able to hold on the trigger. Close, close, close. Folkwine barely able to hold her water there. First base is open. If Folkwine is to reach the Austin Town Bridge, Sammy Seven in the on-deck circle. The 3-2, inside it goes. It's a walk. Folkwine will be at first, and the bags 
reloaded now for Sammy Severn. Ty, how many times have I told you how important of a spot in the lineup Sammy Severn is? So under the radar, so many people don't respect her as much because of the at-bats that are before and behind her. But man, has she come up clutch many times. And now she has a chance to be that bridge that I like talking about. Two RBI base hits in yesterday's game against the Warriors for Severn. She comes up in the biggest spot so far in today's game. Base is loaded, two out for Sammy. Severn takes a first pitch inside for a ball. And critical for Patchen in this at bat ant to not fall behind too far against Severn. However this inning goes, it's gonna be a big moment to boost to either way of the generals to getting out of it or fit for getting the big hit. The 1-0. That one called strike. Severn tried to sell it as the inside pitch, but the home plate umpire that time, Jerry Norris, says it found the inner third, one and one. Nowhere to put Severn, trying to come up big here in the top of the first, the one one. That one liner to short, gloving, fielding, throw to first, and they'll get out of it. Nice toss by Abby Canelli to get the Anthony Wayne Generals out of a bases loaded jam here in the top of the first. Falcons threaten but can't bring anyone around to score. We'll take a first look at the general bats after this. My old boss, you know, he said I would be good at sales because I'm good with people and everything like that. So he offered me a job and uh, here I am. I have a lot of repeat customers, you know, and referrals and it's just nice seeing them with smiles on their faces when, you know, they pick up their vehicles. Them telling me how happy they are with the vehicle. So that's what keeps you going. I'm Jim Timko and I've been at Greenwood Chevrolet for 20 years. If you can dream it, you can live it. Enjoy outdoor living at its finest with outdoor furniture at Sheely's. Whether hosting picnics or dining al fresco, with outdoor dining sets, you can bring family and friends together. You can create an outdoor oasis for your patio or deck perfect for relaxing summer evenings. And unwind under the stars when you cozy up to a nice fire. Savor the season with outdoor living at Sheely's. Sheely's, the best things in life happen at home. Welcome back here, bottom of the first inning, Ty Bartow, Anthony Hartwig, YSNlive.com, resuming action of the call of all the action, I should say, between the Austin Town Fitch Falcons and the Anthony Wayne Generals. The Generals batting order as follows. Abby Canelli, E. Double Air, Bushman, Megan Sumner, Trinity Nowicki, Brooklyn Patchen, Allie Myers, Kat Myers, Taya Marshall, and Molly Connor. Sydney Watson, the circle defensively around her. Abby Toth is at first over at second. Caitlin Mitchell, shortstop is Ayla Ray. Third base, Morgan Roby. McKenna Hogan's behind the dish. Then in the outfield, Ashley McLean's in left. Kylie Folkwine in center. Matty Butis out in right. So after a little bit of a heartbreak offensively and leaving the bases loaded in the previous inning, how do you suspect the Falcons try to bounce back here in the bottom half of the inning? Well, you know, a lot of times, and there's a statistic to back this up, but sometimes when you leave the bases loaded, you give up runs in the next inning. It's just how the sport works. So just like as if you scored, I think this is an important shutdown inning for Sidney Watts. Abby Canelli, left-handed batter. Ooh, a very interesting infield alignment. They have second playing up and first playing back. They like to do this uh, with bunt threats as Canelli. We saw this a little a bit. Ball. If you watched the College World Series yesterday, well, Washington put an alignment like this. They had the second baseman even closer to the circle, but it's not one that you see too often. The 1 0 to Canelli. Called strike. Outer edge evens the count. As Watts tossed the no hitter, walking two, striking out 12 in the state semi against the Lebanon Warriors. Not the first no hitter she's had in the postseason, also a 20 strikeout game to her credit. But I mean, to do it in the state semis, I mean, this is the best of the best. You're just going to come out here and throw a no hitter, it's ridiculous. Checking on the swing for the 1-1 one, one offering, they appeal to the bases umpire over at third and descender said she did not go around, it's two and one on Canelli. Watts, the two one to the leadoff batter Canelli. Canelli waves at that one and misses it. The count evens now two and two.
the Wayne, Anthony Wayne Generals out of the Northern Lakes League. Winners of that conference this year. Falcons co-holders of the AAC All-American Conference Championship with the Camfield Cardinals this season. The 2-2 to Canelli. That one fouled back. And we'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Anthony Wayne with head coach Ronald Myers in his 10th year, 213 wins to just 39 losses in his 10 years at the helm for the Generals. Impressive record to say the least, no doubt. 28 and four record for the Generals this season too. Not too shabby indeed. It's crazy to think that he has that kind of record, but this is the first time they've been to this level. So they've probably been a team that has been sniffing state for quite some time. It's a hard road to get uh, here, and both of these teams have realized that. You look at the both these teams and what they were able to accomplish. They're, they're back in the state championship, and for Fitch, 30 years separates the last time they were at this level. A one nothing loss in the state championship game occurred back in 93. And Anthony Wayne is no stranger to being the underdog. They weren't even the favorites in their region. I think everyone thought that North Ridgeville was going to come out of that region. We saw North Ridgeville a handful of times this year against YSN teams, a very good team, but the Generals beat them 4-2. to two. The 2-2 two -two is fouled off again, and give a lot of credit to Abby Canelli. She is really battling up there in this first at-bat. They then, they then took Carroll Hall in Springfield 7-3 to three to get to state in the 2-1 to one win yesterday over Watkins Memorial, who came into that game with just one loss. As the 2023 high school sports season set to conclude at the conclusion of this game for YSN. We go into summer sports though, and of course you could have all the scores, action, updates, and live feed on ysnlive.com slash live to get your full rundown daily. This is the last day. Tracks in action today in Columbus at Jesse Owens Field as well. We've had a couple of state champions already. Caleb Nastari from United breaking the state record with his 800 time. And Valley Christian's four by one team winning the third straight state championship. The payoff to Canelli, taking all the way, and she Ooh. works a walk. What, what a walk worked by Abby Canelli, and she think took a ton of pitches. She needed to walk because she tripped on the way back to, <laughs> on the way to first. She ran out of the box and then just kind of stumbled on the turf. What? That's uh, not going to be one for the highlight reel. Typically. <laughs> This postseason has had a little bit of trouble dealing yes. with command early in games, too, and we see it come up again as a leadoff batter walks, but that's big for Anthony Wayne to have a runner on, nobody out. Now they can get creative in how they want to try to get this runner over and potentially get him in. Last year, her command was one of the issues that she had, one of the very few issues that Cindy Watts had, a very successful freshman season, but her command at times either drew walks or got her into... Very un, uh, un, not good, not good situations. Yeah, I had 3-0. Not where you want to be as a pitcher. She's done a much better job at it this year with her command, but she still has moments here and there where it does fail her a bit. But that walk was earned by the hitter, not by the lack of command by Watts. She really worked the count, fouled off a lot of tough pitches. That one was more of a talented hitter working a walk than Sydney Watts losing command. Again, pinching at third and at second are the Falcons for the next batter. S is double air. Buckman stands into the box. Another left-hander that Watts will face in this lineup and a first pitch missing for a ball, 1-0. So if you're the hitter in the left and you see the infield lined up the way they are, the place you want to hit it is just over the third baseman's head. A little bit of power slap there in the left field. Also, obviously, right center is wide open as well with the center fielder shading towards left. The 1-0 finds the zone called strike, 1-1. One one. Interesting, though, after that first pitch, they moved Mitchell back to a normal second base spot. Now she's playing back with the corners pinching in a little bit, just a couple of steps in front of the base. And now McKenna Hogan comes out of the crouch and wants to chat with Watts real quick in the circle. Brief conference, and they're on the same page now with the count one and one on double air. Buckman. One of the underrated things about McKenna Watts is her ability, uh, about McKenna Hogan, excuse me, is her ability to just know her pitchers and know when she needs to go out there and have a conversation herself. One and one the count. Double air, Buckman. Trying to get the runner over from first. Nobody down here in the top of the first. 
Swing and a miss, throw down to second. The steal attempt does work as Canelli slides into second. And I don't know if they were necessarily ready, but Kenna Hogan also had to try to wrangle that pitch in and try to try toss it down to second. But nonetheless, still nobody out. Runner at second base, and the Generals are cooking. She got a great jump on that. It would have been really hard for McKenna Hogan to throw her out. A lot of speed on the base pass for the Generals. The one, two. Trying to freeze double there. Buckman, no call on the outer third. Two and two, the count evens. Canelli at second, nobody down here in the bottom of the first inning. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside it goes back to back, full counts. Worked by Anthony Wayne batting. Watts has got to relax a little bit and just be aggressive, get into the strike zone and make Anthony Wayne hit your best pitches. The count full, the payoff. Swing and a miss, strike three, out number one, and, and that's got to be one that kind of calms the nerves a little bit here in the first. That looked a little bit like a little bit of an off speed from Sydney Watts, which is something that I've been really um, encouraged about her this year. Last year did not have an off speed. Like, let's just, she didn't, didn't want to throw it, didn't trust it. This year, a little bit better, she'll throw it from time to time, and that time it looked like she, she went to it and got the hitter way ahead. Megan Sumner, the next batter for the Generals. A pitch up high for a ball, 1-0. Talk I mean, to me about the level of talent you need to have to not only play on the Anthony Wayne Generals, but to be a freshman batting third in their order. It's impressive. I mean, we, we see so many young softball hitters, not just in our area, but across the region that we've gotten the chance to cover. And it's just more and more these, these players with travel uh, at the young level are ready to step right on the varsity floor and make a lot of damage early. Next pitch found the zone for a watch. She evens the count. A ball and a strike now as Megan Sumner with one down in the inning and a runner at second trying to put the Generals on the board first here in this state championship game. The 1-1 from Watts. Low it goes. No chase offered. 2-1. and one. And We've talked about this prior too. And one of the keys against Sid to have any semblance of success is not chasing her pitch. Right. You, you, the, step one is don't go after the rise ball. And if you do that, you make her come down in the zone, you have a solid chance. So far, the, uh, the generals are doing a really good job of that. Megan Sumner awaits the 2-1. Taking all the way. Called strike 2-2. Two and two. That was not a pitch you want to swing at. I like to take. It was a pitcher's pitch. And with uh, less than two strikes, you can afford to tip your hat and, and settle for another pitch. Defense on the infield, straight up. Everyone lined up with their bag. Count two and two. Sumner fouls that one back, and we'll do it again at two and two. These uh, general batters are just doing a really good job of work and work and work and the count. And I think that's one of the things you saw with the Lebanon Warriors yesterday and why they struggled so much. They watched a lot of first pitch strikes yeah. going to the glove. And I mean, obviously not a base hit yet. They got the walk, but you want to be aggressive to counterpoint too. But you got to walk that fine line of not chasing her pitch, but also staying aggressive. Fouling that one back again. Sumner stays alive. Two and two, the count remains. When you have two strikes, you have to be able to foul off her pitches and not swing and miss. And so far, that's another thing that Anthony Wayne is doing a really good job of. Not swinging and missing, but making contact, spoiling the pitches that Watts wants you to miss. 88 degrees, the game time start temperature. 3.30 p.m. was our first pitch, and boy, oh boy, a hot summer day, June 3rd here in Ohio. Third of four state championships that are being <laughs> played here at Firestone Stadium today. Division four is on tap. As They'll appeal to the first base side. No go around for Sumner. Sumner thought about it, but held on the trigger to run the count full. First base open, one down in the inning. Three-hole hitter for the Generals. Megan Sumner trying to deliver. Third straight three-ball count for Watts. Again, a payoff pitch from Sid. 
That one lined into left field. Base oh. hit stays in the line. Coming around to score. First run of the game goes to the Generals. And boy, Ant, you talk about a fine at bat by Megan Sumner. That young lady battled and battled and battled and the freshman delivers with a big time base hit to put her team on top. And it was an inside pitch. She didn't get all of it. She turned on it and just muscled it in the left field and she found the line. Game of inches tied. Barely fair. Trinity Nowicki. Junior, catcher, steps in now. First pitch, a ball, 1-0. as the Falcons, only the second time that they have trailed in the postseason. First time came against Lakeside, Juliana Farmer pitched that one, so this is the first time that Watts has trailed pitching in this postseason. Another pitch missing the zone, 2-0. and In that Lakeside game, uh, Fitch was actually down by the most they've ever been down this season. Three nothing after one half inning. They came back and scored 10 in the bottom of the first, so it didn't last long. Count. 2-0 oh on Nowicki. Staying ahead in these counts are the Generals. Nowicki knew she had a hack to use. She tried one, came up empty. It's 2-1. and one. I like the aggressiveness, though. A lot of, a lot of hitters will say, hey, I'm going to hit 2-0. Oh. Don't want to swing at anything. Just want to kind of take back, make it throw a strike. But against Watts, if you see a pitch you think you can hit, you got to go after it. You can't, you can't let her get away with the stuff. Two and one, swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, or back-to-back -back strikes, I should say. Two and two. When we talk about how this inning can play out and what we've seen, big innings from, from good softball teams, how important is it to minimize damage in this case right now? We just saw it in the Canfield game. They gave up two runs pretty early in the fourth, but then it exploded into a five-run inning, which pretty much spelled doom for the Cardinals. So you got to keep them where it's at. Next pitch goes to the backstop, sails over the head of McKenna Hogan, enabling another runner to go to scoring position, and the fourth consecutive full count worked by General Bats. Make a new baseball softball store, call it General Bats, and <laughs> have every bat that you need in that one too. Business ideas live on the air, no doubt. The payoff pitch from Watts. Swing and a miss, strike three, strikeout number two in this bottom of the first inning. And that'll bring up now Brooklyn Patchen, the senior, for a pitcher-pitcher matchup now in this showdown. And she can help her own team out. She's one of the best hitters in this lineup. Came up with good at-bats yesterday against Watkins. Not the biggest batter in the world. I mean, you look at her, she's it's a small little thing, but she packs a punch. Patchen. Trying to help herself out in the circle by giving herself another run, trying to double the lead for the Generals. First pitch, 1-0 and oh after the miss up high. Man, Watts is struggling with first pitch strikes. and She's getting behind in the count to start, and then she's having to battle back from that. Tossing a ton of pitches, 20-plus in this inning. Count 1-0, and oh, the pitch to Patchen. Up high again, 2-0. Already the general still laying off that rise ball and making Sydney Watts work lower in the zone. As she gets older, she will develop a rise ball that she can throw for a strike and start off hitters with and then come elevated up for the swing and miss rise ball. 2-0 the count. Called strike, top of the zone. Big pitch to get back into the count for Watts. As Patchen was taking all the way, the senior for the Generals trying to come up with another RBI hit here in the bottom of the first inning. The 2-1. Swing and a foul tipped into the glove of Hogan. 2-2. Two two. Really nice pitch from Watts there. Two ball, two strike count. Two down here in the top of the first and a one nothing general lead. Watts trying to get out of it. Into her motion, the 2-2. Foul tip back by Patchen. 
as that, the general's trying to work another full count. That was velocity. That was straight gas. Here's my fast stuff. Try to hit it. And she actually timed it up pretty well. As Patchen. Trying, could, trying to help herself top. out. Yeah, couldn't get on top of the ball, but she definitely timed it up, which is impressive in its own right. Watts walking one, allowing a base hit here in the first. Oh, as the Generals strike first. Trying to get out of the inning with a runner at second, the 2-2. Swing and a miss, strike three, strikeout number three as the Falcons limit the damage done here in the first, but Anthony Wayne does strike first with an RBI single by Megan Sumner, the freshman. We're through an inning of play. It's Anthony Wayne one, Austin Town Fitch zero. We go to the second after this. Reliability. Innovation. Scale. These three values are those we look forward to in our business and in our team. If you're ready for a reliable employer who looks constantly to think outside the box in big ways, we're ready for you. Apply now. Help us push the envelope and deliver success. Envelope one. Take that one extra step. Before the lights come on, before the work day begins, ended, or it's time to have fun, it all starts with the people at Joe Dickey Electric. From replacing a light fixture in your home to building a substation for your business, no job is too big or too small. The people of Joe Dickey Electric power them all. Joe Dickey Electric, over 60 years of powering the Mahoning Valley. Welcome back to the top of the second inning. Bottom of the Falcon order due up. Happy Toth, Morgan Roby, Maddie Butis against Brooklyn Patchen. Generals with the lead looking to protect and Abby Toth cuts on and misses a first pitch. 0-1 to start. A lot of teams would be like, oh dang, we're at the bottom of the order. It's going to be tough to start a rally here. But uh, fifth is bottom of the order is not your typical 7-8-9 hitters. Abby Toth has hit, what, six home runs this year? Five home runs, Five. but she's also batted over 400 this season. One off. Still hit a six, and I'll yeah. be right. 500 batting average for Morgan Roby in the eight hole as well, too. So some impressive statistics in the bottom of the order for the Falcons. Tina Montgomery also made stints at that eight hole, too. Four home runs on the season for her. Bunt is down as Toth looking to play small ball to get on. She will, and the Falcons now have reached base three times by way of a bunt single. And this is going to really, I think, play into the strategy part of it. Do you bring the infielders in and risk getting it hit over the head? Well, I, I talked to Coach Ward last night, and he told me point blank, he said, we see something that we can expose with small ball, and we're going to try to do it. And you already see that here early. They've gotten bunts down, and they're getting on. They haven't hit the ball out of the infield yet. They have already have three hits. Well, two hits in there. Morgan Roby tries the bunt. Fouls it back. Oh, and one. Morgan Roby is consistently one of the best bunters they have on the team. Roby's brother Dylan Roby in the college ranks for golf, so athletics have run through the family before. The 0-1. Morgan gets the bunt down. Patchen takes and tosses to first. Throw back oh, no. down to second. Abby Toe took a big turn at the plate and gets tagged out. So they erase the base runner. Two big blunders in back-to-back -back innings by the Falcon base running and it once again thwarts any offensive opportunity. They're being aggressive, but Anthony Wayne so far has been up to the task. As Toth has turned too far off second, and the Generals are right on it. They actually got away with it, because usually you're not trained to run down the base runner. You're trained to make that throw and get in front of them. So the Generals getting away with that little mistake that is not exactly technically sound. Butis tries the bunt, foul tips it back to the netting. It's 0-1. It's a double play, too. 
When we talk about it, this is going to be the first time completed through the lineup. I know the Falcons typically better second and third time through the lineup, but this is going to be interesting as the game progresses, too. You have three base hits by way of the Munn singles, but base running has been really hurting the Falcons right now with a couple of blunders that they've had in the first two innings. Yeah, it's a shame because their strategy is working. They're getting these infield singles. They're taking advantage of something they see in the general infield but then they're just they're getting themselves out on the base pass, which is just erasing the success that they've had in their game plan. Oh, and two the count on Butis. Butis holds off as it runs low, one and two. Allie Myers, Cat Myers, Taya Marshall, six, seven, eight are due up in the general's order to start the top of the second. It would still be huge here for Butis to reach and give an opportunity to Ayla Ray. This lineup is so deep. Two out rallies are not. Swing out and a miss. Two out rallies may be a thing for Austin Town Fitch, but Brooklyn Patchen is feeling it in the circle. Makes another big play. Strikes out. Butis gets through the second. To the bottom half of the inning we go as Anthony Wayne leads it one to nothing. Trying to add after this. Everything you need to find a vehicle you love is right here at Greenwood Chevrolet. I'm Tracy, and I have the tools to make buying a car you love easy. Browse our inventory in person or online and find a vehicle that's right for you. Next, I'll get you approved for financing that works for you. Then, drive home in your new vehicle. I'm Tracy, and I have the perfect plan to help you drive home in the perfect vehicle. Find a vehicle you love only at Greenwood Chevrolet. As Comco celebrated 70 years in 2022, we have much to be thankful for. We are proud of the Comco culture as we serve our customers with Comco care with our premier customer service, quality parts, and on-time delivery. The partnerships we have with our customers and our community are second to none. We thank you for your continued support. We are proud to be part of this community and will continue to offer great jobs for great people. Bottom of the second inning as the Anthony Wayne Generals with a slim 1-0 lead. They'll send 6-7-8 to the plate against Sidney Watts here in the second. Allie Myers. The first to bat takes a first pitch strike 0-1. Watts, the type of pitcher that does get better as the game will go along when she settles in to a rhythm, but struggled with her command a lot in that first inning. And it's going to be interesting to see the second inning, how she comes out. You know, and it, really, I think it was more of just really good at bats. I mean, she wasn't getting Swing and a match strike too. far behind. It wasn't like she was missing by a lot. These general hitters are just laying off the rise ball, fouling off good pitches, and working really good at bats so far in this game. Count 0 oh and 2 as Allie Myers looks to lead off for the Generals. The 0-2 up high. Tried to go rise ball there, but it took off on her. McKenna Hogan, gravity had to bring it down to earth. Another instance there, just laying off the chase pitch. I know when you end, the end result is, well, it was way high, but when it's at your, when it's at your you know, trigger point, it's at your waist. It's hard to lay off the rise ball. One and two, the count on Myers, the pitch. Strike Ooh. three called, what a beauty on that the inner third. was a backdoor curveball, and man, she thought it was in a hitter, and it tailed right into the inside corner. What a pitch from Sydney Watts. Fourth strike out of the game. All the outs that have been recorded today by Falcon pitching have been by way of the strikeout. Now Cat Myers the senior of the Myers in the lineup. Steps in, righty-righty matchup. She'll take a first pitch strike delivered, and that it's like night and day Ant, when watching Sydney Watts pitch when she gets a first pitch strike as opposed right. to when she doesn't. And that's to, that's to everybody, every pitcher out there. If you're watching or listening, I should say, uh, things get a lot easier when you throw a first pitch strike. The 0-1. Nice hold. They're going to appeal, though, to she first. Held. Did not go around. One and one the count. Her hands might have broken the plane, but her bat barrel never did. 
One ball, one strike to count. One of the things I, I brought up earlier that we saw a lot in yesterday's game against Lebanon is with a four umpire crew, we saw Lebanon get called for a lot of illegal pitches that you don't normally see during the regular season. And I believe that Lebanon pitcher Aubrey Smith was hopping off the rubber and leaving that back foot up in the air. And with four umpires, they're gonna catch that a lot more than you would if there's the normal two umpire crew during the regular year. The count, two balls and a strike on Cap Myers. One down here in the bottom of the second inning. Pitch missing again, 3-1 the hitter's count. I think Watts needs to readjust her game plan. She's trying to nibble a little bit. I think she needs to get a little bit more aggressive, work inside the strike zone a little bit more, and just see if these hitters can, can find holes in the defense, trust the one behind her. It's a hard adjustment to make for someone that is such a strikeout pitcher. The 3-1. Called strike. Three and two. But today she's just not getting the swings and misses that she usually does at the rate that she usually does. Another full count worked by Anthony Wayne against Watts. The count, three balls, two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Five strikeouts for Watts. And the second one down here in the second. I think she heard me, well, Anthony, you don't think I'm getting the swings and misses? Well, check this out real quick. That's four consecutive strikeouts now for Sid as well as Taya Marshall will step up. If you're the Generals though, you're, you're gonna strike out. It's Sydney Watts, you're gonna have your strikeouts. You have to keep working really quality at bats. Good things will happen. Taya Marshall's first look against Watts shows Bunt goes to Roby who swallows it oh. up and tosses to first. Morgan Roby has made fine play after fine play this year at third and she just made another one at the hot corner. One, two, three, go the Generals here in the second. It remains a one to nothing Anthony Wayne lead. Before the lights come on, before the workday begins, before a long day is ended, or it's time to have fun, it all starts with the people at Joe Dickey Electric. From replacing a light fixture in your home to building a substation for your business, no job is too big or too small. The people of Joe Dickey Electric power them all. Joe Dickey Electric, over 60 years of powering the Mahoning Valley. Craftsmanship to us is 60 years of pride and dedication. Passed down from generation to generation. The hardwood floors that your kids take their first steps on. The solid wood doors you quietly close at night. The things we create day in and day out are the products that end up turning your house into a home. At Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uncompromising quality and craftsmanship built our business. And it will keep us moving forward for generations to come. What can you do on over 5,000 acres? At Mill Creek Metro Parks, you can discover unique habitats and wildlife, create memorable family moments, experience history, heritage, and park programs. Top of the third inning and the top of the Austin Town Fitch order, Ayla Ray, Caitlin Mitchell, and Sydney Watts do up. So now you begin the second trip through the order if you're Brooklyn Patchen. What's kind of, uh, what's the adjustment that you've seen this year from Fitch that why the second and third time through the order, they're so dangerous? Oh man, the small ball is gonna continue to play its part. As the bunt was down, Ayla Ray laid it down third baseline, trying to jump on it rather quickly was Megan Sumner, but she kind of double dipped in the, yep. the ball and glove and couldn't get a good throw off, just decided to eat it before she threw it. It's a smart play to eat it, um, but that, that double clutch was just a difference there. And Fitch continues with the game plan of, we're gonna hit small ball, we're gonna make these corner infielders work. And so far it has worked, it's been base running errors that have helped Fitch back. Another bunt attempt goes straight to Sumner, the pitcher, Ayla Ray will go to second, stop there. Runner in scoring position for Fitch, one down as Ayla Ray moves to second, Caitlin Mitchell the sacrifice. Now usually in bunting situations, Sydney Watts gets one pitch to swing at. We'll see if Ward gives you that one pitch that she can try to get a piece of. The Falcons 
have had a base runner in each of the first three innings, have had a base hit in each of the first three innings. Sydney Watts had a rocket to left center field yesterday, was robbed by a great catch by Lebanon Sydney, um, center fielder Tubner. Made that running catch in left center that robbed her of at least a double. Count 1 and 0 to start as the pitch went outside on Watts. Time is called, and they're going to intentionally walk Sidney Watts oh, now to get hit. to McKenna Hogan. She almost hit Hogan with the bat, throwing it back to the dugout. <laughs> Watts frustrated, too, because you know she wants those at-bats as well. But Anthony Wayne, second intentional walk that they've issued to Fitch today. That's uh, Tina Montgomery is going to be courtesy runner once again for it's, Watts. It's an interesting decision because... Hogan has done a really good job this year protecting Sidney Watts. And Hogan, who's come up big in these clutch situations time and time again this season, now has another opportunity. Two on, one down. The cleanup batter, the senior. And she can still bunt. Uh, everyone in this lineup can. The infield playing pretty back. Especially she does square middle. around, and the bunt goes back to the screening. And... Yeah, the time, element of surprise now taken away from a McKenna Hogan bunt. That time she dropped her barrel a little bit, and that's one of the bunting 101s. You've got to keep that barrel up. Wayne pinching at each one of the corners. First and third. It looks like about five, six steps in from the bag at third. I don't know if I'd want to get that close to McKenna Hogan. Ball up high, one and one. And this was a pitch, uh, this was a batter, I should say, McKenna Hogan, that walked three times against Melena Toth. And we already know the amount of walks that Melena Toth's issued all season, three times in a single game. That just shows the type of eye she has at the plate. 22 walks all year, and three of them are to Hogan. Bunt tried to get it down. She did square around, jabbed at it. It's one and two. A ball and two strikes the count on Hogan. Falcons with runners at first and second. Tying run in scoring position. Go ahead, run at first for Fitch. And now McKenna Hogan has to be a two-strike hitter. Like Anthony Wayne has done a really good job of today. The one-two from Patchen. Swing and a miss. And boy, oh boy, Brooklyn Patchen has delivered big strikeouts against batters that don't usually go down by way of the K. Both Ayla Ray and McKenna Hogan suffer a strikeout here in this game. So the plan to walk Watts actually works out. They get the strike out of Hogan. And that's gonna be up to Folkline, the geologist as you like to call it. She had an opportunity the first time up to try to deliver. Has another RBI opportunity here for Fitch. First pitch to Folkline. She goes swinging, hits it in the right field, past the glove of the second baseman, coming around to score is Ayla Ray, slide in at the plate, she is safe, runners at the corners, Kylie Folkwine, the geologist, with maybe the most solid hit of her career. I, st I think they could have been aggressive and sent her to second, the, the generals made a bad mistake, they had no chance of getting Ray at home, but they still threw it home, and I think Folkwine actually had a chance to make a pay for that. Abby Canelli with a diving play, just couldn't get the glove on it. Kylie Folkwine with the clutch two out single. The bunt down, Sammy Seven Patchen gets on it. Snow Cone grabs it off the infield, tosses to first for out number three. But the Falcons' small ball efforts do finally pay off with a Kylie Folkwine RBI single here in the top of the third. It's Anthony Wayne one, Austin Town Fitch one. We go to the bottom half of the inning after this. Reliability. Innovation, scale. These three values are those we look forward to in our business and in our team. If you're ready for a reliable employer who looks constantly to think outside the box in big ways, we're ready for you. Apply now. Help us push the envelope and deliver success. Envelope one, take that one extra step. Craftsmanship to us is 60 years of pride and dedication. Passed down from generation to generation. The hardwood floors that your kids take their first steps on. The solid wood doors you quietly close at night. The things we create day in and day out are the products that end up turning your house into a home. At Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uncompromising quality and craftsmanship built our business. And it will keep us moving forward for generations to come. 
back here in the bottom of the third, Ty Bartell, Anthony Hartwig for this Division I state championship game. The RBI single from Kylie Folkwine and the first RBI base hit in the state championship game by an Austin Town pitch player ever. We're going down to Kylie Folkwine, so we'll have that forever. She will be the first player to ever have an RBI base hit in the state championship game for Austin Town Fitch. And what a big hit it was. We're knotted up at one fresh ball game to start this bottom of the third inning. Right now, it just, it's looking like a really good softball game. I know there's a lot of things that could happen between now and seven, but both teams look really composed. Both teams are really having good quality at bats. Not a lot of mistakes in the defensive side to this point. 1-0 the count to start as nine hole hitter then the top swing and a miss for Molly Connor. It's evened up at one and one. Watts fanning some more batters up to six Ks already on the day. Impressive stuff. It's crazy. It doesn't feel like it because he at bats that they're having, but he's racking up the Ks either way. That one pops up. Excuse me, five Ks on the day. One of those outs, Morgan Roby's tossed at first. I can't forget right. about that five Ks on the day. But despite that, like I said before, the generals are putting together quality at bats, and they have to keep the course there. You know, Sydney Watts is going to get her strikeouts for sure. She's good enough to do that. And you just gotta tip the hat when she does and keep working the game plan. Molly Connor now down in the count one and two. Watts put the heel on the rubber and immediately a timeout called by Connor, trying to get in the mind, play the mind games a little bit. You Anything. gotta love this part of the game though when the pitcher and batter are both trying to control the clock. Anything to break up the, the tempo. And Watts took a long time to pitch this one too. Swing and a miss on the one two pitch as Connor goes down swinging strikeout. That one is number six, a half a dozen on the day for Watts. He made you correct really quickly. Back to the top of the order. Now the second time through the order for Anthony Wayne as Abby Canelli will take aim. She walked in her first plate Shortstop, appearance. Number 19, Abby as Canelli really did a good job working the count, as did most of these generals, but she was able to work it for a walk, fouling off a ton of pitches from Watts that first go around. She was part of four hitters in a row that were able to work a full count on Watts. Sid gets the first out in the inning, one down, bottom of the third. Watts now going back to the top of the order as Canelli takes another ball down low, 2-0. and Canelli was able to steal second and eventually came around to score the only run for Anthony Wayne today. But she's one of those that you really want to keep her off the base paths if you can. Yeah, that steal that she had was a no doubt. There wasn't going to get her. She had a great jump. She's fast. Count 2-0 and the pitch. Tried to get the bottom third of the zone. No call given. It's 3-0. Now you wonder, what do you do, 3-0? Do you just groove one in, expecting her to take all the way, or do you try to get the corners of the zone and take your chances? You, do you think green light's on for Canelli in this situation? The 3-0. It wasn't on as a ball up high and a four-pitch walk to Canelli, her second of the game. Good eye. So with a one-out base runner, Anthony Wayne. Do you think a steal team. is maybe in order? I think so. I think with the successful they had on the first go around, they were going to be really aggressive with her here at first. S is double day or Buckman. We'll take a first pitch called strike. 0 oh and 1. They have to pick the right pitch to go on. If they try to run on Sydney's velocity, that could end up being a bad idea. You gotta feel like McKenna Hogan knows what's coming at this time too. Gonna be a little bit more ready if she can get a good pitch to throw on. The 0-1, runner goes. No, fakes to go and stops. That took off. Looked like she was gonna put her head down and barrel her way all the way to second, but she stopped on a dime and quickly retreated. That's a good read too, and she's really 
Looking at her, at Canelli's base running at first, she's doing a phenomenal job timing up the whole motion and delivery. The 1-1. One, one. Called strike one and two, much to the dismay of the general fans here. Probably takes away the steal for now. Last thing you want to do is have a double play with a strikeout and throw out. Double dare Buckman struck out her one and only time up. 0 for 1 on the day against Watts. The 1 2. Runner goes. It's up high. 2 and 2. The throw not in time. Stealing second base. Canelli. As again, the Generals will have a runner in scoring position. Anthony's dumb. No, I'm not going to steal with two strikes. Yes, I am. Come on. That was a no doubt steal, too, because it wasn't even close. Picked a great pitch to run on, two and two the count as Watts gonna have to deal with a runner in scoring position once again. The two two to double air Buckman. Swing and a miss, strike three, out number two in the inning as Buckman goes down by way of the K for the second time today. And here's the player that had the big hit for Anthony Wayne last time. Megan Sumner, yeah, the RBI single that she kept just inside the left field foul line. Brought home Canelli, the first run of the game. Kind of a similar situation this time, though. It's two down instead of one, but still looking for another clutch hit is the freshman. First pitch takes off on Hogan, one, one and oh to start. Fitch trying to get a shutdown bottom of the inning after scoring and tying the game in the top. The 1 0 to Sumner. Called strike, and that one looked like a challenge pitch, and it was one of those. <laughs> you want to see what I got here? Try to hit it. Right. That was like, you got me last time, but I'm going to get you this time. That fire and the competitor in Sydney Watts. Probably wants to get this out more than any other, any other out. The 1 1. Called strike. Again, challenging right at the knees with some heat. One and two, the count. Sumner, though, was down in the count last time and really battled herself back into it to get that base hit. Let's see this two strike approach from the freshman. Watts kicks, fires, foul back. Seven strikeouts on the day already for Sid. Two down here in the bottom of the third inning. One to one. Runner at second. That's the go-ahead run for the Generals. Again, the one-two to Sumner. Swing and a miss, strike three, strikeout number eight on the day for Watts, seventh swinging, and she leaves the go-ahead run in scoring position as we are through three innings of play here at Firestone. Went back to that curveball, tailing outside, and yes, I will swing at that, and I will miss. As we go to the top of the fourth inning, we're still knotted up at a run apiece here in this state championship game. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. YSN is very important to me because it gives me a platform to talk about what I love and what I have a true passion for in life, and that is sports. The possibilities are, are just endless. And uh, every day we continue to grow and get better. My name's Scotty Mitcher, and my sports network is your sports network. Top of the fourth inning, Abby Toth leads things off for the Falcons in this one-to-one -one ball game. 
as a first pitch delivered a strike on one toth got the bunt single her first time up just like a lot of these falcons have they've really utilized small ball Swing and a miss as she has the green light to go hacking this time around. She comes up empty, 0 oh, and 2 the count. That was almost the same curveball that Sydney Watts threw to get out of the last half inning. Tailing outside with a lot of velocity. The 0 oh, 2 to Toth. Swing Ooh. and a miss. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon, yeah. and good night. Brooklyn Pacton. She took her even further outside and Toth obliged. Another a lot of velocity out of Pacton. Uh, Patchen got her fourth strikeout now of the game. And they've been against some pretty big bats in the order, too, that she's got in K's. Morgan Roby, inside that first pitch goes. She scoots out of the way of it, 1-0. I wouldn't be surprised if she's clocking at maybe 65 with her speed, which is still way above average. The one out to Roby. Roby goes hacking at it, fouls it back, one and one. Bottom of the order. Patchen had a lot of success against the Falcons. Able to get that double play ball. Last time up after Toth was able to reach and that really stymied momentum that time for Austin Town. The pitch is fouled back by Roby again, it's one and two now. Yeah, the, the defense for the Generals has had kind of an up and down day because they haven't been able to field the bunts particularly well, but they've had a couple of big double plays that have gotten them out of some serious sticky situations. You surprised that the bunt has been taken out of the game plan this inning? No, I mean. One and one, with a tie, once, game once one they to one. Start playing in, then you start to say, okay, we'll counter that. We'll make them pay for that with our power. You, know, you look how far even shortstop's playing pretty in, and now third is playing way in. Two and two, the count on Roby as the last pitch, Mitch for a ball, the two two. Called strike three, outer third. What a nice location by Patchen. Fifth Patchen strikeout of the day. Really working the outside corner of this inning, and Toth and Roby both strike out on that pitch that tails outside the curveball to the right hand of the hitter. Matty Butis. Over yes. one on the day with a strikeout against Pageant. Butis first pitch takes for a strike, 0 and 1. And Pageant, similar to Watts, very aggressive in throwing strikes, gets ahead of another Falcon bat. The 0 1. Hey. Sort of excuse me swing, but it does clip off the knob of the bat, 0 and 2. As Patchen looks to strike out the side here in the top of the fourth. Brooklyn Pageant is going to go into the Division I level as a Creighton softball commit. Pretty, uh, pretty big deal when you get to the <laughs> Division One softball, no doubt. I had to look. I, I was watching her pitch. I said, she looks just like a Division One pitcher with high velocity, moving really well, and she's showing it. The so. one-two to Butis. Swing and a miss. Strikes out the side, does Brooklyn Patchett. Both pitchers are feeling confident in the circle. It's a one-to-one -one tie heading to the bottom of the fourth with the Anthony Wayne general bats coming up. We believe expectations are made to be exceeded. At the new Toyota of Warren, it's about more than just getting a great deal. It's about service you can count on and a friendship you can trust. Year after year, we've done what we do best. We've gone the extra mile so you could too. Because we know it's just not about buying a new car. It's the start of a new adventure. Toyota of Warren, driven by you. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. 
We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. We, of course, thank our friends over at Youngstown State University, one of our proud sponsors. And I also want to remind you, if you want to join these sponsorships here on YSN, you can go to our advertising page, ysnlive.com slash advertising. Get the rolling ad logo like you see below the scoreboard, a 15-second commercial, a 30-second commercial, or go all the way up to a corporate sponsorship. Again, ysnlive.com slash advertise to find the package that best fits you and your company. Perfect time to do it. We have plenty of summer action that we're going to be covering throughout YSN and then ahead of the brand new 2023-2024 high school sports season. A first pitch strike is delivered to Trinity Nowicki. Four, five, six, due up in the general's order. Going through the middle, the meat of the order. Watch is doing a much better job getting ahead in the last several innings. Tried to relocate a similar pitch. That one runs a bit high to even the count one and one. Rice balls is not being chased. That's a big part of Sydney Watts' game. She has countered, though, with some fantastic off-speed oh. pitches that have found their mark in the zone. Off-speed and then the high-velocity curveball, whether it be the back door curve or the one that goes to the outside corner, has been Swing really working. and a miss, one and two. <laughs> and sometimes she'll just go to the straight-up fastball and just be like, here, hit this. And the thing is, when you're laying off of like her pitches like the rise ball or the breaking balls, it, you're still only getting, I'd say, 60, 70 percent of the time, maybe at best. Like they're yeah. still gonna fool the best of the best it's, every once in a while. It's step one. Step one Swing is swing and a miss. High. Another strikeout for Watson, and she's starting to feel it now. Starting to feel it indeed, and we're seeing less and less of those long work at bats that she had in the first couple innings. I think she's really starting to just go right at these hitters, be aggressive in the strike zone and not try to nibble on around the corners. We know how important the game of momentum is in this sport. So that tying run scoring early enough for Austin Town is big too, not lingering with a one nothing disadvantage. Right now, I mean, I think momentum is right teetering on the fence. I mean, both teams are playing really well right now. And it was looking pretty Gloom for the Falcons after a couple base running mistakes too. Just yeah. thwarted offensive opportunities, but able to break through for that one single run. But we both know now, we know, guaranteed, one run ain't winning this game. Nope, nope. You gotta score at least two. One and one, or excuse yeah. me, Owen won the count. Two was all that the Generals needed yesterday in that two to one win over Watkins Memorial. When you got great pitchers oh. like this in the circle, you don't usually need a ton, but the problem is the given trade-off is it's pretty uh, it's pretty difficult to get that one, two, three runs that you need scratched across. One and one the count. As Patchen Ooh. pops that one up on the infield. Abby Toth says she has it. She does, ranging into foul territory for out number two on the pop-up. A lot more foul ground here on the right side than most softball players are probably used to. And so far, the infielders that I've seen in the couple of games that we've done down here at Firestone Stadium have done a really good job of knowing where to go and knowing where to plant themselves. We're looking at a temperature of almost 90 degrees, too, and we know yeah, it's going to be hot on that turf. turf. Yeah, Ooh. it is cooking right now. Sweltering are these players here in Firestone. There are still people sitting outside the, the far left field, far right field bleachers out there in the outfield. Taking in the sunlight. First pitch, a ball to Allie Myers. Allie Myers struck out looking her first time up. Getting some of that vitamin D. I got plenty of uh, the vitamin D that I needed down in Dallas too. I think my, uh, my shins are still cooking right now. 1-0 the count. Called strike, 1-1. One one. That's another backdoor curve tailing in, and, and it looked like it's going to hit you, and then it just catches that inside corner. Watts definitely pitching with a lot more confidence than in earlier innings. Trying to get through this bottom of the fourth and send it to the fifth tide. The 1-1, one, one, up high and inside, 2-1. And, and these are the type of games, too, where I think a lot of people are curious to see how Sid will react when that knob just keeps yep. getting ticked up with the talent level on the other side. We've seen her 
face the likes of the local teams too and have her double digit strikeout games. But now it's like, keep taking up the, uh, the difficulty level on the type of bats that you have to face. Well, let's see if you can do this. Well, let's see if you that, can handle this. That's why her travel summer is so important because she's gonna be constantly exposed to division one power five recruits every weekend. And how she does at that level is gonna determine really the rest of her career, how she can do going on to the next level. Two balls, two strikes, two down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Anthony Wayne trying to avoid going one, two, three here in the inning. Allie Myers awaits the 2-2 offering from Watts. The pitch. Up high, she takes it. Three and two. She said at the top of the broadcast, Sydney Watts is going to be compared to Taryn Alvello a whole lot, who is probably the best pitcher statistically to come through the state of Ohio. Played for Bloom Carroll in her high school days. A Ohio record 1,146 strikeouts in her career. Watts has Carroll. 601 going into the state semifinal. So it's 12 more, 613. Popped up. This one going to be a play for Mitchell, and she's able to keep the glove on it. I said she broke out the gold glove Ooh. yesterday, and she must have kept it on for today's championship game. Looking into the fireball in the sky. Ooh, wasn't pretty, but she made it happen. Finds a way to make it work. We're through four innings of play, still knotted up at one run apiece. We go to the fifth. Austin Town Bats looking for a run. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. Let's face it, buying a home is one of the toughest things you'll ever do. At Forever Homes, we are licensed realtors that specialize in representing our clients in the purchase and sale of single family residences and income property in Columbiana County. We truly love this area. We were born in this area and we pride ourselves on the knowledge of transactions, school districts, neighborhoods, and related services. So the next time you need to buy or sell your home, make it forever. Forever Homes Real. Why choose local? Because you live here, work here, learn here, relax here, and celebrate here. 21 WFMJ is our Valley's only locally owned TV station, and our focus is local. Other TV stations don't have that same focus as their owners are somewhere else. But 21 WFMJ is rooted in the Valley. Local people making decisions that affect your life right here where you live. Top of the fifth inning and the big part of the Falcon order due up. One, two, three, Ayla Ray, Caitlin Mitchell, Sydney Watts. Ray scoring the only run for the Falcon. She uncorks that one to right, going a long out way. Of it's out of here. Out of here. The go. ace of bases says, give me four more in the state championship game. Ayla Ray, what more can you do? Two to one Falcons, first lead Austin Town. Sixth home run of the season. We talked about her ability to develop that power swing in the offseason, how much time she put in with her dad, Ronald Ray. And boy, oh boy, has it paid off big time. Biggest game of her life. She sends one over the right center field wall. Big solo shot for the Falcons. First pitch to said, hey, I'm going to get one good. She's going to try to be aggressive with me. Took the first pitch and just launched it to right field for a home run. A Youngstown State commit is Ayla Ray and has been touted by Sydney Watts as the best hitter she's ever faced in the country. I think it's safe to say that YSU is getting a steal. Absolutely. I've said that from day one, too, no doubt. That one liner off of the oh. glove of the third baseman and Caitlin Mitchell with a missile off the bat. Gets it off Megan Sumner's glove. And another runner aboard for Austin Town Fitch. Sumner almost caught that. What a amazing hit and almost an amazing play. Do you face Sydney Watts now with a runner at first, nobody out? Nope, I think they're gonna walk her again, honestly. I think it looks like it is, but now you, you take the risk of putting another runner in scoring position. And for the Falcons showing their ability to play we are having a pitching change it here. Picked a great time. Yeah, you didn't I know. Miss any action at all. I mean, for the first change. time, it seems like uh, the technology was on our side for once. Pick the <laughs> pitching change, like you said, Ant, to uh, to decide to 
take a dump on us, but looking at the pitching change now, it looks like Allie Myers is the new pitcher coming into the circle for the Generals, or Cat Myers, excuse me, my, my apologies. Cat Myers coming into the circle for the Generals, making a semi-early pitching change. We saw them make the pitching change against Watkins Memorial, but only two-thirds of an inning we saw came into relief. So we're gonna see a new look. The Falcons up two to one. Runner at first is Caitlin Mitchell, and they want to give a different look to Sydney Watts. First pitch, Watts. Oh, she had the big girl swing loaded up for that one, but came up empty, 0 and 1. The 0 1. Watts fouls it back, 0 and 2. With a count 0 and 2, the pitch to Sid. Up high for a ball, 1 and 2 now, the count. Shaking off a couple of pitches. Here is Cap Myers, she's got the call. Runner at first is Caitlin Mitchell. Watts trying to move an insurance run into scoring position, the one, two. Holds on the trigger, the count evens. Cat Myers is a Michigan commit. So only a couple of so D1 going, commits, yeah. You're just going from Swing and a miss, strikes out Watts. You're just going from Creighton to Michigan. Now brings up McKenna Hogan, and you got to feel like you want to, for if you're Anthony Wayne, you wanted to have a stopper come out. You wanted to stop any further runs. You want to keep this a one-run deficit. You know how many programs would just kill to have two D1 caliber <laughs> pitchers in their bullpen? The count. 0-0 to start for McKenna Hogan. Runner at first is Mitchell. Hogan takes a first pitch strike. But now with a new pitcher in the circle, you kind of have to get reacclimated with all the movement, the velocity, the break on their pitches too. So this is a, a good call by Anthony Wayne. And if, if it obviously pays off, which you're going to take your bets with someone like Cat Myers in the circle. The 0-1. That bunt takes a rocket off the bat and to the, vet, to the netting, rather, 0-2. Having two D1 pitchers reminds me of that 2019 champion team that had Allison Smith and Sophie Howell, who both went D1. Didn't allow a single run throughout the whole tournament. Run ruled everybody. Falcons, if you're just tuning in, taking a 2-1 to one lead in the top of this fifth inning. Thanks in part to an Ayla Ray solo shot. Pitch goes back to the screening, and Caitlin Mitchell heads up base running. We'll take second base as the count moves to one and two. So now a base hit can add another run to the Falcon lead. It's a big mistake there, letting the ball get away. McKenna Hogan trying to make the Generals pay. The one, two. Looks like they're also sneaking second base behind the runner, which will open up the opposite field hole for Hogan. And Hogan has worked so hard on being able to take the pitch the other way in the offseason. Swings and misses in this exchange, and how about Cat Myers? Goes 3-4 in the lineup and strikes out both of them. Big 10 better watch out next year. This cat's unbelievable. <laughs> Kylie Folkwine delivered the first RBI base hit at the state championship game for Austin Town. And she cuts and misses, 0-1. Oh has a chance to add another here in the fifth. The 0-1. Oh that one runs inside, pops off the glove. Yeah. Caitlin Mitchell goes to third. Another blunder now for the 
battery combination of both Cat Myers and Nowicki behind the dish. And one more of those can really hurt the Generals now. I, I think that one was a cross-up. I don't think uh, Nowicki was ready for an inside pitch. So the count one and one. Kylie Folkwine has another runner 60 feet away for Austin Town. The pitch. That one lined oh. out right center field. That has some good pop to it. It goes, it bounces up on the wall in right center field. Another RBI home. There goes Folkwine from second to third. RBI triple for the geologist Kylie Folkwine. And the Falcons add another to their lead. That's two RBIs now for Folkwine on the day. Coming through in the clutch against two D1 level pitchers. We've had the chance to interview Kylie Folkwine before too, and the confidence that this young lady just expresses, the aura of confidence right. that surrounds her. She's always ready for these big moments. Yeah, a freshman on paper, but doesn't certainly act like one with her maturity level and the way she plays these games. Well, how about her year? I mean, she stepped on the freshman court, volleyball, Stepped on as a freshman of basketball on the varsity level. And Got we kept, significant minutes, starting minutes in both, we, too. We, we kept hearing, wait until softball, wait until softball, and man, is it not disappointing. So they tag Cat Myers for a run now. That will be charged, though, I believe, still to patch in those. Yes, yes. But Cat Myers does give up the hit that scores an additional run for Austin Town as the first pitch fouled away by Sammy Severn. It's 0-1. After back-to-back -back strikeouts, it looked like uh, Myers had the Falcons' number a little bit. Folkwine comes through and says, not so fast, my friend. The 0-1. Ooh, that's Ball a nasty strike. pitch. Beautiful pitch, too, on Severn. It's 0-2. Both. Pitches hit out to right center field by both the lefty Ray and the righty Kylie Folkwine against two different pitchers, too. I just love high quality softball, man. These pitchers are nuts. 0 2 pitch lined it down the right field line, but it goes foul. 0 and 2, the count remains for Severn. Pitch leading it three to one, scoring two in this top of the fifth inning. Solo home run by Ayla Ray, RBI triple by Kylie Folkwine, scoring Caitlin Mitchell. And the first Falcon lead ever in a state championship game. Crazy to that think. Pitch oh, goes no. by the pitcher, runner coming home. Folkwine able to score the run, no wow. tag applied. An additional run for Austin Town. And that one, maybe one that Wayne would definitely want back. That's the one you can't have happen ever, but man, Nowicki has had a rough inning behind the plate. Another couple of balls get by her, and now that throw just missed the pitcher, completely missed her. The Falcon family starting to feel all the excitement oh. and electricity from this three-run lead here in the top of the fifth inning. Nothing's a done deal ever, but three runs cushion to Sydney Watts. Yeah, that mountain feels like it's 10 runs for the for the generals. Last pitch was fouled back. Count remains one and two. The one two pitch. That lined up to short, able to cut it off and throw. Picked out of the dirt, but no, comes in and out of the glove over at first base for Pageant and safe at the bag, Severn. This inning's not done yet for Fitch. Things are unraveling a little bit for the Generals' defense. They got to calm themselves down. I like this conference in the circle with players only meeting. They want to talk about. Hey, we got your back. You know, I got your back. Calm everybody down. Realize still it is a two run game, three run game, excuse me. So many. Former Falcons that have come out to support this softball team. And a let's go Falcons chant filling Firestone Stadium here in the fifth. And now coach gonna come out and have a conference with his team, bring the infield back in. But if you're Anthony Wayne right now, two down in the fifth inning, you now trail by three runs. What's kind of the conversation going on in that conference right now? Uh, one, you got to keep them here. You know, every run counts that much more when you're playing Sydney Watts. 
But then, yeah, like I said, it's just this. It's just to calm everybody down. State championship games are high, high stressful situations. And if you let it turn into a snowball effect, it can do it really, really quick. So Anthony Wayne just trying to break up the momentum a little bit, give everybody calm down, and make them go out there and make a play. Their offense is very good. I mean, you look at the 13 of their first 15 games were all double-digit run totals. Abby Toth back in for Fitch. Cuts on and fouls it back, 0-1 to start. As the Falcons strike for three runs so far here in this top of the fifth, have taken their first lead in this state championship game. And runner oh, it's just take, gets to second as another mishap near yeah. the plate. And boy, oh boy, and you gotta feel and you don't you don't wanna you don't wanna speak for them, but you gotta feel like maybe getting into the head Nowicki behind the dish a little bit. Yeah, Nowicki's having a tough inning. The one one. Fouled back. One and two. But you look at this general offense, and they've had 19 times this year they've had double digit run totals. So they have to trust their bats, keep fits where they're at, and try as they might to make a comeback attack. Abby Toth hits that one to left. It's in for a base hit. Coming around to try to score a run. No, pumping the brakes, Sammy Severn. Abby Toth goes to second, and the inning continues but for Austin. There's, there's another mistake throwing home. You got to keep that runner at first base. And when it rains, it begins to pour for Anthony Wayne here in the fifth. Fitch can really break it open here. Morgan Roby. Morgan Roby. Gap to gap. Type hitter. Loves uh, to find holes on the infield. Kind of surprised that Coach Ward isn't taking the chance to go with Tina Montgomery in this at bat with the power that she brings in two in scoring position and how big a huge hit would be in this situation. You talk about it, and Tina Montgomery has stepped to the on-deck circle, so. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so they're, looking, they're looking for Tina Montgomery, but they still, they do trust the bat of Morgan Roby. They do. Freshman uh, and average. sophomore, too. You're high looking at average. two young players that have so much trust in this Falcon order. Fouled away, 0-2 for Roby. First two swings, Roby trying to go opposite field, staying inside the ball really well. No balls, two strikes. Top of the fifth inning, Falcons lead it four to one. That one popped out towards right field, foul territory, it's out of play. Another opposite field swing, trying to stay on the inside of the pitch, drive it to right field. even though we see the outfield shaded a little bit towards the line anyway. Roby steps into the box again with two strikes. The pitch. That one gets away. Another run comes home to score for Fitch. Sammy Severn crosses the plate. And now the lead extends again. Five to one, Fitch. Just unraveling for Nowicki, unfortunately, behind the plate. You hate to see it. At this level, it, it sucks, you know, but it's just one of those days where it's just getting really, really tough for her mentally. One and two comes back to get the strikeout, does Cat Myers, but not before the Austin Town Fitch Falcon strike for four runs in the top of the fifth inning. It's Austin Town Fitch five, Anthony Wayne one. We head to the bottom of the fifth in this state championship game. Before the lights come on, before the workday begins, before a long day has ended, or it's time to have fun, it all starts with the people at Joe Dickey Electric. From replacing a light fixture in your home to building a substation for your business, no job is too big or too small. The people of Joe Dickey Electric power them all. Joe Dickey Electric, over 60 years of powering the Mahoning Valley. 
Your culinary adventure awaits at Legends Food and Drink. Experience a welcoming ambiance while you explore our appetizing menu featuring over 20 meals under $20 and over 30 lunches for $12 or less. Our private dining room seat between 10 and 20 at no additional cost. And don't forget our spacious 35-seat bar for your favorite sporting event. Book your special occasion in our elegant banquet room that seats up to 150 comfortably. Legends Food and Drink, a taste you'll remember. Market Street and Route 224 in Boardman. the bottom of the fifth inning five to one Austin Town leading it as how important is a shutdown inning in this one after a four run lead uh, Chief, you have all the momentum right now the only thing that Anthony Wayne can do to get it back is to score so Sidney Watts needs to set them down in this frame called strike Cat Myers leads things off it goes Cat Myers Taya Marshall Molly Connor that's seven eight nine here in the order for Anthony Wayne. The 0-1. Held up her swing, it looks one and one. No, 0 oh and two, excuse me. Called strike. I saw the arms go up from the umpire, but called the strike. You hear the Fitch fans feeling it. They're getting loud. The 0-2, low and into the turf, one and two. I have a feeling this is the time for one of Sydney's signature rise balls. Up one, two. The one, two. That one pop fly, stays up in the air. Abby Toth trails into foul territory to get it, one away. Well, it's a rise ball and it got her to get under it and pop it up in the infield. One down now. Taya Marshall. Will step in to bat. Righty righty matchup. The 0-0. That one popped back to the screening, 0-1. And, five unanswered runs for Fitz. All five of those runs coming, or four of those five runs, excuse me, coming in the top half of this inning. The 0-1, low and inside, one and one the count. The 1-1, one, one. inside Ooh. again it goes, two and one. It's a good hold. 50-50 pitch on the inside corner. Taya Marshall grounded out to third, her only time up. The 2-1. That one popped up, third base side. Morgan Roby oh! gets it into her glove, sliding to her knees, out number two. Two pop flies in foul territory. Two outs here in the fifth. And you know on that turf, sliding is not fun. And she's able to sacrifice her body a little bit to make that catch. Nine hole hitter. And Molly Connor. As the Falcons look to send the Generals down. One, two, three here in the bottom half of the inning. The first pitch to Connor. Line past the third baseman, stopped by Ayla Ray, but she's just gonna eat it. That was deep in the six hole, Ant made the diving stop, but really 
Couldn't get a throw off in time. Wisely eats it. Once that got past Roby, there was no chance to get her at first. So Ray saves a possible double if that gets in the left field, but she definitely good, makes the smart decision to eat the ball and not make that throw. You know, you risk an error. It's a long throw across the field. No need to risk it. Generals, fans, trying to start some momentum themselves here after the two out hit. Top of the order. Yeah, well, their, their best hitter so far against Watts is up. Walked twice, but two really good at bats. Brief conversation in the circle after the conference. He said he's seen Watts very well today. And we'll see if that continues. The first pitch to Canelli. Called strike. Ahead in the count to start will be Watts, 0 and 1. The first first pitch strike that Canelli has seen. The last time up, Watts walked her in four pitches. The 0 1. Swing and a miss, throw down to second. It goes into center field, nicely backed up by Folkwine, but a runner now in scoring position for the Generals. That's Connor. Anthony Wayne has been really aggressive on the base pass, and so far, Hogan hasn't been able to stop him. Trying to get through the fifth inning, send it to the sixth with a 5-1 lead for Fitch. The 0-2, just trying to slap that one. Opposite field, it goes foul, count stays 0-2. And, and this is what she's gonna do with two strikes. It's gonna be a lot of opposite field swings, trying to stay inside the pitch. Count 0 and 2. The pitch from Watts. Up high, Canelli lays off, one and two. Vitally important for the Falcons to try to have a shutdown inning after the four run burst in the top half. The one, two. Another slap shot try. Goes foul, one and two, the count remains. Out of the box. Ste stepped on the plate, so out number three, and boy, oh boy, another blunder. And that's another thing that is a lot easier to call with four umpires on the field. Absolutely, as the umpire and crew makes the right call. We're through five innings of play. The Austin Town Fitch Falcons lead it in the state championship game, five to one. We'll be right back. Craftsmanship to us is 60 years of pride and dedication. Passed down from generation to generation. The hardwood floors that your kids take their first steps on. The solid wood doors you quietly close at night. The things we create day in and day out are the products that end up turning your house into a home. At Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uncompromising quality and craftsmanship built our business. And it will keep us moving forward for generations to come. We know when it comes to insurance, you have so many choices. But if you're looking for someone who lives in your community, someone who cheers for your community, and someone who works for your community like you're part of our family, well then please let us introduce ourselves. Hi, we're Heiner Insurance. How can we help? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Do not adjust your sets. DJ Yokely coming out of the bullpen for Ty Bartell, who will be announcing the Scrappers game tonight. Five to one, Austin Town Fitch here, top of the sixth inning. See if Fitch can get a little bit closer to that elusive state championship. Leading things off. Here in the sixth is 20, 
Tina Montgomery. Yeah, you got it. Thank you very much. Pinch hitting. First pitch upstairs, ball one. Second pitch also upstairs, ball two. I've never hit out of the, come out of the bullpen before. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time. Coming cold. Montgomery waits the pitch. Cut on a missed. Strike one. I should have asked Ty if he had a, uh, a one-liner he wanted to use. I guess I'm... We'll, we'll figure that one out during the break. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Montgomery waits, taps this one foul down the third base side. Count evens itself, two and two. Montgomery, much like you, coming off the bench for her first at bat of the game. Trying to make the most of her appearance in a state championship, the sophomore. Sophomore infielder in the program. She waits the 2-2, cut on a miss. And Montgomery, the first victim here in the sixth. So an Ayla Ray chant <laughs> breaks out, it. and for good reason. First time that she's gonna see Kat Myers in the circle. Her and Caitlin Mitchell both chase the starter. Patchen's out of the game. Ayla cut on and missed 0 1. So Ayla Ray sent a ball that's still going. She launched that one her last time through. Tries for the bunt here. It's a beauty and just trickles foul for strike two. Not many players can go a game and have a bunt single on their stat sheet <laughs> and a monster home run to right field. I think one of my favorite and most low key moments in all of Diamond Sports is when someone shows bunt. And then the next pitch, they hit a home run. Pulls back and just. Amazing. Like, I love it. Like, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Ray stands back in the 0-2. Cut on a miss. And Ayla Ray, the ace of base, retired for out number two. So here comes Caitlin Mitchell, the senior. Mitchell has been doing an outstanding Caitlin job Mitchell. at second base. You heard Ty talk about the golden glove that she's been carrying around this postseason. She takes strike one at the knees. She was the last straw for Patchens that chased her out of the game, that liner that went just over the glove of the third baseman. Brought Kat Myers into the game. Myers through the wine, she deals. This is gonna be tattooed past the second baseman. Into the gap it goes. Around first heading for second. She's still got it. She's gonna put the brakes on and they're gonna play safe here. And I like it as Mitchell with a two out double here in the sixth. So she hit the ball hard against the Creighton commit and then the Michigan commit comes in the circle and Caitlin Mitchell says, I'll see your Creighton commit and I'll launch your Michigan commit into the gap. <laughs> And now a Sydney Watts chant. The Falcon faithful is alive and well here at Akron Firestone Stadium. No intentional walk here. They're going right at Watts. She caved the first time against Myers. She was, a, I believe, the first one to see her, correct? Yep, yep. First pitch up and away, ball one. One oh catches the inside corner. Watts didn't like it. One and one. She's also had a beautiful bunt lay down her first at bat. An intentional walk her next time up. Sid dances back into the box. Myers scans in. She looks, deals. Upstairs, ball two. Two balls and a strike. Two away. Runner on second. A lot of deuces on the scoreboard. Watts waits, Myers delivers, and the pitch in there on the outside corner this time, and it's two and two. The pitch, Watts cuts on the changeup and comes up empty, and that's out number three. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, a four-run lead, 5-1. Fitch, back after this. Change, 
This one word can make you break out in a cold sweat. But with change comes wisdom, experience, and understanding. At Myers Family Insurance, we can help make changes in Medicare, insurance, and retirement a positive experience for you and your family. We've gone through changes, like our new office and new faces to help our family of clients too. For all your Medicare needs, call Myers Family Insurance. Check us out online at MyersFamilyInS.com or find us on Facebook. If you can dream it, you can live it. Enjoy outdoor living at its finest with outdoor furniture at Sheely's. Whether hosting picnics or dining al fresco, with outdoor dining sets, you can bring family and friends together. You can create an outdoor oasis for your patio or deck, perfect for relaxing summer evenings. And unwind under the stars when you cozy up to a nice fire. Savor the season with outdoor living at Sheely's. Sheely's, the best things in life happen at home. Back we come, bottom of the 6 5 1, Austin Town Fitch with the lead. DJ Oakley, Anthony Hartwig, Ty Bartell had, I mean, he was cruising along in this game, and you know that it's killing him. It's killing him. And it he's is. probably got this game on, and it's eating at him, but listen. He even the left young his man, water bottle. He did. I, I mean, we'll take it back to him. <laughs> in the words of Ty Bartell, no doubt, we'll bring it no back doubt. to him. But I know he wants this, and I know Fitch wants him to be the call on this. So they got to do it for him now. Got to do it. Last six outs are usually the hardest to get. You feel so close, you can taste it, but you got to stay focused and stay committed and get these last six outs of the game. Watts well, deals first pitch up in his own ball one. Sid, as the wind picks up, the hair blowing in the wind. Something out of an action movie. Swung on and miss. Strike one. That's a hero shot. <laughs> it was a. You got that right. Buckman waits the 1 1. Watts. Rocks and fires. Buckman shows bunt, and Watts leaves it outside. Ball two. Watts has done a much better job in the middle innings of this game. Being aggressive in the strike zone, getting ahead of hitters, not falling behind too much. Generals have had their share of blunders on both sides here this afternoon, and that one in the dirt. Yeah, even though Fitch hit well in that fourth inning, there were also some runs that were kind of gifts to the Falcons as well, wild pitches and a throwback to the pitcher that just wasn't on target. But you know what they say. I mean, you got to be advantageous, yeah. right? Better to be lucky than good sometimes, and Fitch has been both here today. And the state championship round it can be so stressful on your mind. You want it so bad. Sometimes you get a little bit tight when one mistake happens, and we see it snowball really quick. On strike at the top of the zone. Three and two now on Buckman. She has to step out of the box a minute and just reflect on that pitch. It completely froze her. Count extended three and two. Watts digs in to the pitching rubber. Puts her glove on her right quad and starts her descent. This one chipped back foul and we'll do it again. Watts with a new ball. Everybody positioned. Normal depth. Watts gets the sign from Hogan. Toes and goes. Cut on and missed. Another big strikeout for Sid the Kid. One away here in the bottom of the sixth. A four-run advantage. The Falcons right now grand slam proof, which is a real term. <laughs> That's what you want. Where you want to be. That's the number. As here comes Megan Sumner, the freshman. Watts deals. Sumner watches. That one above the hands. Ball one. And the umpire going to. 
Warren Watts about something. You see anything? I'm not sure what. Maybe uh, he didn't give her the go signal. And she pitched before the batter was set. Watts again, glove on that right leg. Brings it back and deals. Upstairs again, two balls and no strikes. Sydney Watts just a sophomore, but she's got enough experience for, you know, fifth year seniors. It's, it's incredible what she's been able to bring to the table. She's already got over 600 strikeouts in her career. The Ohio State record is 1,146. That pitch inside, and she falls way behind. Three balls, no strikes to Sumner. Definitely got a shot at it, right? That yeah, record? I mean, Halfway so home. Here comes Sid. 3-0, strike. Registers right down Broadway, and now a hitter's count of three and one for Sumner. What's oh. amazing this year, 600 strikeouts, but they didn't play nearly as many games as they did last year. Yeah, only 21 games. Last year, they really stacked up their schedule. They found that maybe it gassed her a little bit too much to the postseason run, so they lightened up their schedule a little bit as far as games played, not as far as competition. Watts deals, strike on the outside corner, all the way back comes Sydney Watts, three and two. Sumner stands back in. Watts knows this could be a big delivery right here. Anthony Wayne lingering on every pitch. Popped up, left field, over, and oh! Snow cone grab in left field. How about that? Ashley McLean, what a grab. That ball kept carrying. And it was destined for a double to the wall. They're selling the snow cones for $3 yeah. at the concession stand, but McLean's going to give you that one for free. 5-1, two down here in the sixth. The Generals down to their final four. Here's Trinity Nowicki, the junior. She'd love a big hit. She's had a tough day behind the plate. And anytime you have a tough day like that, you'd love to just find little ways to redeem yourself a little bit. Ball one in Nowicki. Back on the rubber is Watts. Quick glance over towards the dugout. Now she deals. Strike on the outside corner. Watts has been hammering that outside corner today with the curve ball. Then comes back door with it to the inside corner to the righties. The 1-1 one, one to Nowicki. Cut on, big swing and a miss, one and two. Change of speeds, that'll do it to you. You're trying to gear up for 68 to 70 miles an hour and then here comes Sydney Watts with 55 and a changeup. One and two, Watts in control, two away here in the bottom of the sixth. 5-1 lead for Austin Town Fitch. Through the wind, rocking, firing, strike three, Watts got her again. On to the seventh inning, Fitch looking to tack on some insurance runs, brought to you by Myers Family Insurance. Change, this one word can make you break out in a cold sweat, but with change comes wisdom, experience, and understanding. At Myers Family Insurance, we can help make changes in Medicare, insurance, and retirement a positive experience for you and your family. We've gone through changes, like our new office and new faces to help our family of clients too. For all your Medicare needs, call Myers Family Insurance. Check us out online at MyersFamilyInx.com or find us on Facebook. Crafts and Ship to Us is 60 years of pride and dedication. Passed down from generation to generation. The hardwood floors that your kids take their first steps on. The solid wood doors you quietly close at night. The things we create day in and day out are the products that end up turning your house into a home. At Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uncompromising quality and craftsmanship built our business. And it will keep us moving forward for generations to come. After six, your score, 
Five to one, Austin Town Fitch, Anthony Hartwig, DJ Yokely with you. Ty Bartell joined you for the first five innings of this ball game before he had to be dismissed to go. And Alice Mahoney Valley Scrappers, another beloved right. staple of what we do. And uh, certainly want to bring this one home for Ty, but I'm getting all kinds of text messages. Excitement is building in Austin Town, and you can't blame them right now. You can see it. They're three outs away. They have a chance to tack on some insurance runs here in the top of the seventh. Here comes my homegirl, McKenna Hogan, taking strike one on the outside corner. This young lady I've known for a long, long time. Hogan's now, heroes. Now she's a senior and vying for the first ever softball championship in the history of Austin Town Fitch. And the first team championship since it, 1931, yeah. you yeah, said? Yeah, boys basketball. Wow. Nearly a, an entire century. And you think about some of these teams that have formed in yesteryear as McKenna Hogan takes a strike on the outside corner, one and two. I mean, some of the football teams, some of the basketball, some of these softball teams that yep. we've seen. Tells you this, I mean, they play in Division One and Division Two in football. It's just the higher you go, the harder it is to get through these teams. Upstairs, inside a little bit, and McKenna Hogan rolling the dice there. It's two and two. Maybe a little cut on that speed ball. Here's the 2-2 two -two delivery from Myers. Hogan fouls it off at the last second, stays alive to see another pitch. Hogan has raised her batting average almost 200 spots this from this year from last year to this year put a ton of work in the off season to become a much better hitter for this team especially going to all sides of the field she can really hit multiple spots on the field this year Myers deals and the changeup is spoiled foul by McKenna Hogan once again Stands back in, Myers deals, and that one up and away. So the count goes full three and two. A lot of people listening on YSN, anxiously awaiting the six outs left in this ball game. A lot of game to go. You hate saying that, but it's true. <laughs> and Hogan swings and misses for strike three. You know, Anthony Wayne has pitched well today. The runs that he's given up for the most part, other than Ayla Ray's home run, have been small ball or hits that barely get out of the infield or defensive miscues. The pitching staff of Anthony Wayne with two Division One commits that are both seniors have really done a good job today despite being down five to one. And this was a game that was one nothing at, right. at one point and you felt like that was the squeeze, right? That was, that was the one that was gonna break the back and Fitch comes back not only in commanding fashion as that one's cut on and missed, but they have come back and they have dominated this game and taken advantage of every opportunity they could. Folk one up at the dish, by the way. She's dominated. Two RBIs, a triple to the right center field gap. That one misses up and away, and now it's one and two to Kylie. First RBI of the day as well. The first state RBI for Austin Town, state championship RBI for Fitch. They were shut out in their only appearance in 1993 before this year. So Kylie Folkwine for, will forever have the first state championship RBI in Fitch program history. Look at that. A little nugget by Anthony Hartwig for all you history buffs out there. Oh. Folkwine goes opposite field, into the gap it goes. Around first goes Kylie into second. She gonna hold up, she is. In with a one out double. So don't stop now. I know we're in the, in the seventh, but Kylie Folkwine just a home run away from a cycle. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm betting you she'd, she'd exchange not hitting the cycle for raising that championship banner in the seventh. Just a guess. Yep. One away, runner on second base. Fitch trying to extend this lead. And here is Sam Severn. Sammy Waits, first pitch in there for strike one right at the letters. And 
And another strike to Severn as she falls behind 0-2. Severn gonna be an upperclassman next year. Gonna be one of the strong leaders emotionally of this team. The 0-2, Sammy cuts back and fouls it off for an additional pitch coming up. Will probably be oh, in line to take over second base when Caitlin Mitchell graduates this year. Think about how special this Austin Town pitch team is. I mean, the names that are, are staying are just as impressive as the names that this is their last game. This is dribbling on third base side. It's going to be a fair ball, and that'll advance. Volkwine to third, it gets away! Uh-oh, uh -oh. play at the plate! Safe! The run comes through to score. Fitch will add another. I don't know another why they're throwing history. it around. Yeah. Folkline took an aggressive turn and they just thought, well, we'll just get it off the base. And one of the big uh, miscues of a defense is you never want to throw the ball around when it's not needed. I mean, trying to back pick in that moment with two outs when Myers is absolutely dealing right now. And that's cut on and missed. It's been a lot of that for the for the generals today. Toth digs back in. Down 0-1-1. And now 0-2 as she watches that one go by. Pitching hasn't been perfect for the generals, but it definitely hasn't been bad enough to give up six runs. Tap towards third. That play is made. Across the diamond we go, and Toth retired for out number three. All right, Falcon fans, call your family, call your neighbors. Anybody in Austin town, get them on YSN because the Lady Falcons are three outs away from a state championship, and we'll be right back with it after this. Before the lights come on, before the workday begins, before a long day is ended, or it's time to have fun, it all starts with the people at Joe Dickey Electric. From replacing a light fixture in your home to building a substation for your business, no job is too big or too small. The people of Joe Dickey Electric power them all. Joe Dickey Electric, over 60 years of powering the Mahoning Valley. My old boss, you know, he said I would be good at sales because I'm good with people and everything like that. So he offered me a job and uh, here I am. I have a lot of repeat customers, you know, and referrals, and it's just nice seeing them with smiles on their faces when, you know, they pick up their vehicles, them telling me how happy they are with the vehicle. So that's what keeps you going. I'm Jim Timko, and I've been at Greenwood Chevrolet for 20 years. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Special thank you to our friends over at Greenwood Chevrolet, strong and great supporters of not only Austin Town Fitch Athletics, but as well as your sports network all throughout the year here on YSN. Anthony Hartwig, DJ Yokely, Ty Bartell with you for this Division I championship. Here we go, first pitch popped up on the infield. Ray's calling for it, lets the second baseman over. First out is put away. One pitch, one out, Ant. That's what I call efficiency. And a little conversation between the team before they went out. A little players only meeting, they dispersed. And you could tell there's a little pep in their step. So here is Allie Myers. Watts through the line, Myers fouls it back to the screen for strike one. You can feel the electricity on the right side of the stadium with Austin Town Fitch. Also some Fitch fans in front of us here. They have overtaken this stadium. Peppered in red, white, and navy blue. Watts, the 0-1. Rocks and fires upstairs. Hogan able to handle it, ball one. Watts 
Rocks and deals. Popped up center field. Can of corn, out number two recorded in center field. The Falcon Nation will rise with two outs here. One out away from a state championship and here they come. Cat Myers digs in. Watts deals. Myers watches it upstairs, ball one. It's gotta be such a tough moment for the fielders out there. They're so close, you can, you can grab it, but you just have to get one more out. Myers digs in. Good size to her, can change this game with one swing. Watts deals. Upstairs, ball two. Sid's got to calm down a little bit. You can only imagine what's going through her head right now. Myers is a junior heading to University of Michigan in a couple of years. Watts, rocks and deals. Upstairs, ball three. A walk means nothing. Falcons lead by five here with two outs in the seventh. They just need that one out and Watts again the emotions that are going through her mind right now, you can only imagine. You're starting to picture it, picture it, picture it. Sid through the line, she deals. Myers takes, and that's strike one. Wind picking up. Oh man, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Through the line, the pitch, and ball four. So now, the Generals have life. Thank you. Wind blowing everything around up here. So now we've got a runner on first. And a courtesy runner. Second baseman number 99, Taya Marshall. And there's Taya Marshall in. Trying to extend this game. Watts deals. First pitch in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Watts delivery popped up and fouled off. Strike two. Ooh. Watts, Falcons fans, get ready. The 0 2. Said, rocks and deals. Ooh, and That's just close. missed it. Watts wanted it. They were ready to celebrate. She was jumping up and down. And the home plate umpire says we play on. And Sid's got to take a beat. Batter back in. Watts, rocks, deals, ripped, third base and foul. Stays one and two. Last out is not gonna go down without a fight. No one wants to be the last out of a game. Watts once again sets. Rocks, fires, and another foul ball. 
as the anticipation continues to build here at Akron. The Falcon fans ready to blow the top off this place like a pop bottle. Watts gets the ball back. One and two the count, two outs, the pitch. Up and away, gets away. Runner will advance to second. Maybe a little bit of frustration on that pitch from Sidney Watts trying to fire it really fast. Just holding on to it just a little bit too long. Watts again composes herself in the circle. She rocks, fires, cut on, and foul off. Oh, I thought she missed at that. And that got a piece of Hogan, so they'll check on Kenna, make sure she's okay. The umpire will walk the ball out personally. Whew. Heck of a bat here, you gotta give that credit. It's been two strikes for a while, fouling off pitches. Two and two. For the championship. Sydney Watts rocks, fires, upstairs, full count. Oh, ho, ho. Good takes, good takes. Close, Close takes. Though. They couldn't get closer if Sid walked that ball in herself and placed it. Incredible. Three and two, full count. The pitch, upstairs, ball four. And so the Generals in business here. Heck of an about. Ayla Ray gonna walk over and have a conversation. What do you say here? Calm down. I mean, we're up by five. You know, you can calm down. The base runners don't matter. Get the hitter, get into attack mode. Don't get frustrated. Looks like Coach Spaulding is also going to go check on Watts. Yeah, I think they're just trying to make sure she's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. We've had a set of keys put in through the press box. Your keys? We've lost the set yeah. of keys. Please come to the press box to identify and play them. Somebody's not going home as quickly as they thought they were. Runners on first and second. Two outs, pitch. Leads by five. Six to one. DJ Yokely, Anthony Hartwig, Ty Bartell. Watts with runners behind her and to her left. Popped up. Oh, McKenna Hogan. Hogan after it and just out of reach for strike one. That would be pretty apropos for Kenna to have the last out of the game. Would have been a heck of a way to end in a running catch right before the screen. Watts again, the 0-1. The pitch upstairs, and Hogan chases the runner back to second base, no throw. Mitchell also did a good job getting back behind the runner in case Hogan thought the throw was necessary. One ball, one strike, two outs here in the seventh. The pitch, cut on and missed. One and two. Watts feeling a little bit more in control right now. You can tell with the velo on that. The one, two from Watts for the state title. Pitch inside, ball two. Told you that last out's not gonna be easy.
Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A lot of time being taken, and the umpire asked the batter to step in. She does exactly that. The payoff pitch from the sophomore sensation Watts. The pitch, cut on and missed! The nest has been fed! Austin Town Pitch, you have the 2023 state champions in Division I. Your Lady Falcons are flying high. What a season, Fitz never lost. They're undefeated and they rolled through the tournament in dominating fashion. They end it with a state championship. What a scene here at Firestone Stadium. A team that everybody had the target on their back the entire year. They battle adversity. And all those battles allows them to win the war in Division I. Crazy thing is, there's a lot of them coming back next year and the year after that. Could be a dynasty for Fitch coming up in softball. Your final score here in the Division I state championship. Austin Town Fitch, six. Anthony Wayne, one. Congratulations to Coach Ward, to the entire coaching staff, to the seniors, and all of the Austin Town Fitch Falcons. For the first time since 1931, they bring home a team championship, and it's the softball team that has wanted this so bad. The nest, Anthony, has been fed. As they play, we are the champions. They did it for 1993. The team got here, lost one to nothing in a heartbreaker. Fitz gets back here 30 years later, 30 years in the making, and wins six to one in dominating fashion. They're putting the table out there by the circle. We will stick around and celebrate with all you Fitch fans as they announce the rosters of the runners up and Anthony Wayne and your 2023 state champion, Austin Town Fitch Falcons. What a year it's been. That's four state championships on YSN now during the school year. Incredible. So the Generals will get their comeuppance first. We'll make this baby final. Get your awards as your name is called. Number two, CC Star. And I know that it's got to be a feeling unlike any other Number six, Tegan for this coaching staff. Not the way they wanted to go out last year, obviously. A team that has battled adversity all offseason. A lot of questions internally. Can we do this? Is this team the team? And here on June 3rd, Anthony, 2023. We can answer that with a definite yes. Number 14, Ellie Myers. Number 15, Brooklyn Patchen. And this will be the only team in spring sports, correct, to bring home a championship trophy this year? Yep. Number 17, Essence, You got to think that the anticipation sometimes is a lot heavier than the actual moment that you win it. Yeah. There was, I mean, they celebrated, don't get me wrong, and I'm not gonna knock the celebration, but I think there was more of a sigh of relief because they knew they could do it. The expectation was that they did it. And then they went out and got it done. And then after how hard that seventh inning was, I mean, credit to Anthony Wayne, they fought their tooth off to try to get that uh, last out not, not to happen. So the anticipation kept building, kept building. Foul ball, foul ball, walk. 
finally the strikeout to end it from Watts. Is there anything more fitting than a Sydney Watts strikeout to end the season? I don't think so, nope. As they gather around the table, do the Lady Generals. Scorekeeper Sarah Meyer. We'll turn it over to the public address announcer here shortly. Assistant coach Carolyn Volksberger. And then we we'll try to come up with some plans. I mean, naturally, you got to think that uh, our friends over at Sam's Wedge Inn would want to have a little bit of a party, huh? I think so. Shout out to Sam Wedge Inn. I think so. I think a celebration party might be in order. All are invited. <laughs> Let's make sure we don't call it out yet. Let's make sure they want it. So Tim Street will turn things over to the generals. Let's turn it over to Tim. Ladies, exactly 20 years ago, Anthony Wayne High School took home the state championship trophy in softball. And with your game here today, you have proven, once again, that you're not only one of the top teams in Northwest Ohio, but you're one of the top teams in the state of Ohio. And regardless of which of these trophies you're taking home today, I know that your school is going to display it with pride because it shows what you took to get here. You play in one of the toughest regionals in the state of Ohio. You do know who's the number one team in the state that was in your regional. You knocked them off to get to the state tournament. You beat the number two ranked team in the state semifinal to be one of the teams that's playing on the last day of the season. So on behalf of our board and our staff, 818 member schools, it's my honor to give Anthony Wayne the Division I State Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations. Statistician Bob Gugliotta. Assistant coach Rich Raymer. Assistant coach Jerry Brock. Assistant coach Becky Spaulding. Assistant 
assistant coach, Bob Jones. Assistant coach, Nicole Fiddler. And the head coach of the Falcons, Steve Ward. What a moment that's got to be for Steve Ward. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, OHSA manager of membership and compliance and a 2013 Austin Town Fitch graduate, Ronald Sayers will present the state championship trophy. Ladies, they always say good things come to those who wait. 30 years after Austin Town Fitch, earned its lone state runner-up trophy in the softball state tournament, you get to take home the Division I state championship trophy. Coach Ward, you led this team through an outstanding year. 22-0, you outscored your tournament opponents 57-7, and enter today on the heels of a no-hitter in the state semifinal. I've been a part of this community for 28 years. I've known a lot of really good athletes, known a lot of really good teams that walk the halls of Fitch. There is no doubt in my mind that this Austin Town Fitch softball team is the most dominant team to ever walk the halls of Austin Town Fitch High School. On behalf of our board of directors, the OHSA staff, our 818 member high schools. It is my greatest honor to present to you the Division I 2023 State Softball Championship Trophy. There it is. The trophy is hoisted high. Pictures will be had, memories will be made. And, and the Austin Town Fitch Lady Falcons will forever be etched in history as 2023 state champion. Final thoughts, Ant? This, what a dominant performance that Fitch had this tournament run. Like Ron Surt said, outscored their opponents 57 to seven on their way here. And they just rolled their way to a state championship. Congratulations to Austin Town Fitch, the first softball team to win a state championship for the school and the first team to win a state championship since 1931. That's gonna do it for us. Congratulations once again. I'm sure that the party's just getting started because the coverage is in the same wagon. We'll have all the coverage, ysnlive.com for you. We'll have the story up this evening and whatever interviews we can grab along the way, that's what we're going to do. On behalf of all of us at YSN, we thank you for tuning in for each and every pitch this season, each and every story that you read, each and every click that you have on our website helps us get to where we want to be for you. Your final score once more, Austin Town Fitch 6, Anthony Wayne 1. Your 2023 Division I state champions, the Austin Town Fitch Falcons. Good night, everybody.